I should have said that if you guys want to join in here, I, I, I have an unlimited supply of questions, actually. <laughs> but uh, um, Jonathan, so wh what are the two or three questions that you think we most need to answer to figure out where we're headed in this area of using mobile and internet technology to improve the wages and living standards of workers in the countries of the ones we're talking about? If you look ahead yeah. five years, what are the two or three questions you'd most like to know the answers to? If not the, app, if not the right static end of story answer, at least have more, uh, more understanding around, I think, the, the, the notion of which particular communities would be most responsive to interventions to help make this stuff work. You know, that we've got a lot of kind of, we, we've got a lot of anecdotal evidence, we've got a lot of, you know, we actually have some very nice studies that have done things on the, you know, the weaving cluster in, um, you know, in, in Nigeria or the, the mango cluster, you know, in, in West Africa somewhere. Um, and we're trying to draw from the, the relatively small a evidence base um, assertions about, um, you know, kind of where to place our bets, right? If, if we were policymakers, we wanted to fund these sorts of things. And it's actually really interesting to hear things like the, the way you talk about what percentage of the jobs this thing might, the, you, you know, your, your approach might uh, help us with. Um, it's taking that, that data and some other data together and figuring out um, what are the, what are the sectors that are most ripe for transformation here? Um, and literally at the level of, if we're talking about small enterprise or people who have the, the, the choice of being um, a small business person on their own or going and finding a, a job in the formal sector somewhere, where, where are the places where we want to kind of encourage that migration over to formal jobs? Where are the places where in a, in a more digitally empowered, digitally charged uh, environment, even in resource constrained settings, people can use uh, things like their phone or their smartphone or access to the, the, the cloud or whatever to make a go of being self-employed or become an employer um, uh, in, in the next five years, you know. Uh, so that evidence is still not entirely available. Um, so you're talking about what kind of industries, what kind of workers, what yeah. kind of countries? I think, yeah, and those are all like parts of the mosaic, right? I mean, it, it may be that um, the you know, the, uh, the parts of the agriculture chain, for example, may benefit more quickly from these sorts of specific interventions with technology around, around uh, employment than the construction sector or something. Mm -hmm. And, but th those studies don't exist, as far as I know. So you wait for a lot of studies before I'd you go like anywhere, them. Jacob? <laughs> No, I mean, we, we, we move first and we try to make a dent in the market and an impact as much as we can. But, uh, you know, we were discussing earlier, and I think a role that's important for the bank to play is to carry out some thoughtful analysis of initiatives like ours. I mean, as an entrepreneur, my job is to is to be a person of action, you know, to get things done, to move things forward, uh, be the first mover in a market, and, and generate value for the users of the service. Uh, now, uh, you know, how much time do I have to build upon uh, market data analysis and to reach out to my users? I do in as much as is beneficial to me, but I think, uh, you know, a good, rigorous third-party evaluation of some of these services and understanding their replicability and scalability really would only help us. I mean, I'll speak for myself, but, uh, you know, understanding from an outside perspective what works uh, and then also what we're doing well and, and what we need to improve on. I had the impression as an um, American watching TV during the Arab Spring that basically everybody in the Middle East is now on Twitter and Facebook and uh, social media is now the norm of communication. But you all, you were there yet, were disabusing me of this notion. Yeah. So what's the penetration of these social media and these emerging markets that we've been talking well, about? Well, as we were saying, I mean, the Dubai School of Government uh, has issued uh, an Arab social media report, which I believe is, is, is one of the first of its kind, if not the first of its kind. Uh, and the bank as well uh, issued a practice note last year on uh, new technologies, uh, new technologies and their ability to address labor market challenges. Uh, the bank presented actually an interesting statistic, which still kind of surprises me. Uh, that on aggregate across the Arab world, uh, only 1% on average of citizens have internet access. Now, I think that probably represents a very broad distribution curve. To me, it strikes me as a bit low. But I will say uh, in Palestine, which is on the higher end of access to technology, the most recent statistic says that it's really only about a third of people who have internet access at the best of times. 
Facebook and Twitter usage in countries like Egypt, for example, uh, or uh, at a penetration level of 10% or less. This is what the Dubai School of Government uh, report revealed. So everyone was very excited, I think, during the Arab Spring about the role that Twitter was playing in mobilizing people and, and Facebook, and no doubt it did. But the vast majority of, of Egyptians, and we run a couple of services in Egypt, as well as Palestinians, Tunisians, Moroccans, all countries where we're active, are still using very basic technology. And that is going to take a while in terms of uh, its ability to advance and to also reach people in, in rural communities, and especially young people. The price points are high. Uh, even uh, you know the most basic smartphone handsets we're seeing on the market are uh, anywhere between uh, $50 to $80. That's, that's a lot of money for people. Um, data penetration, uh, Palestine, we're saying, as well as other countries in the region, does not yet have 3G network coverage. So uh, I think the, the media and public uh, in general tend to latch on to these new emerging trends in technology and saying this is fantastic, whereas we want to scratch beneath the surface as well and look at the average household and individual and what their actual uh, usage of technology is. And just maybe one final other mm -hmm. point related to the earlier discussion of, you know, what does a phone look like in emerging markets? And I, ob I observe anecdotally whether I'm in Somalia or Kenya or Malawi or, uh, you know, or Bangladesh for that matter, uh, and you do see the entire gamut. You see people with full feature Blackberries and you see people with handsets that are 10 years old. Um, uh, you know, I think there is going to be a range, but in terms of access and where we go in the future, um, price point for mobile phones is lower. However, with the advent of the computer or even the laptop, I'm sure we were having this discussion 15, 20 years ago saying, well, in 20 years' time, every household will have a computer because the price is going to come down. And I'm sure at the advent of electricity or piped water, people said the same thing, and it hasn't happened. So, uh, you know, these low-cost devices are much more uh, readily spreadable. Their potential for growth is much faster, and no doubt we will see it. But I think we need to be cautious at the same time and really think about uh, the way this technology can spread. And one of the solutions is you know, making internet accessible through mobile access points, mm -hmm. having computing centers where people can come from villages and do their ODESC work at a centralized location. So there are a lot of workarounds and, and ways to make this happen, but we need to be conscious of that. So how do you look at mobile technology? Is it complementary, disruptive? Um, I think it's complementary. I mean, if you, again, you know, you have to focus. It's hard to be all things to all people. If we go back to my three dimensions of size of company, type of service, location of employer, employer and contractor, ideally we'd like to be in the middle of all remote work, right? So any think about companies like Amazon and eBay are in the middle of all e-commerce. Well, Odesk right now is the leader in e-work. More work is done on our platform by a significant margin than anybody else in this business. So. We ultimately would like to be serving all size customers, all work types, globally. And so all work types means whatever the device, whatever the work, but again, done via the internet. It would not be a local job, it would be a remote job, right? right? And um, so right now we, we do work with some very large customers, customers like uh, Google, um, some very large social networking sites that recently went public, that, those types of companies. And um, we're doing things like content creation, localization and translation, content moderation, content creation. And I see no reason why a lot of these things couldn't be done on a mobile device. Hmm. Is there a point that one of you wanted to make that I didn't ask about that you wanted? Because if not, please. Just um, the... Uh, Another, I think, challenge uh, to as we try to sort of get get these tools, get this set of opportunities out to as many people as possible, so they can take advantage of them, um, is the continuing difficulties in in interface, um, in ease of use of these things. I mean, like we, we would like to go beyond SMS. Cause SMS is very simple; everybody knows how to do it, but it works better in some languages than others, for example. And I think that you know, it, when, when we start getting into countries with you know a thousand languages or something, um, we we need uh, to keep pushing on the technical platform to make a lot of that as much of that stuff disappear back into the fore, uh, background and let so let more people do the work they want to do uh, and make the kind of transnational connections. Um, if we get limited to to building the the right set of tools uh, for uh, speakers of, of just four or five languages in the world, we're, we're not going to get there. 